Okay, we're gonna try the watering again. This can seems to be problematic. Let's try. Try it one more time. I'm spilling, it's making a mess. We're gonna try something else. Hello, and welcome back to the farm. Today, we're in late uh, July, early August here in the Mid-South, and it is uh, 100 degrees, give or take. And we're going to plant lettuce. Now, for those of you that don't know, lettuce is a cool weather crop, which means it won't germinate unless you have cold temperatures. Generally, uh, what some people do is they put their seeds after they put it into the trays uh, in their freezer for a couple of days. Now, Miss, Mrs. Possum Ridge Farms is not real big about me putting dirt in a freezer. So that's a non-starter. So we here, have a germination chamber that I built several years ago that allows us to put the seeds in and allow them to germinate at the proper temperatures. In this case, right around 72 degrees. But first, we've got a plant. If you've watched any of my videos in the past, especially in the spring, you'll see a lot of this stuff is very familiar. So we're gonna take our potting soil. I prefer commercial potting soil to homemade just because it's easier. And we're gonna take our soil and we're gonna put it in our tray. Now, these trays are reusable. I buy industrial ones so that we can do this. Basically, when they're, you're done with them, you dump the dirt out and you put them in the dishwasher and it cleans them right up. This potting soil we're using today is uh, miracle Grow. Uh, I think we got it at Walmart a year or so ago. You, you, this stuff goes a long way. And so, in essence, you fill the cells up the best you can. Try not to make a mess keeps the wife happy that way and what you do is you fill them up and that's exactly what I'm doing I'm filling the cells up now why is this such a big deal because if you have air in these cells it can affect your germination rates lettuce some say is almost impossible to germinate in the summertime well that's true if you don't chill your seeds and, and all the other things I'm about to show you it's very difficult you certainly do not want to direct seed in the summertime even if you have a summer resistant heat resistant variety of lettuce like Muir or Cherokee and so as you can see we have our dirt in the tray now I'm going to take this dirt and I'm going to yes I'm a first degree black belt I'm going to wax on wax off and so watch what this does is it pushes the dirt down in the soil. So you have very, or in, into the cells. You have very, very little settling when you do this. So it's important that you push it down in to the cell. Now, this is the same thing the commercial people do, except they have machines for this. I'm not a rich guy, so I don't have a machine. So we're stuck with wax on, wax off. And so, as you can see, our dirt looks pretty good, pretty good. We want to see the, the plastic the best we can around the inner part of each cell. And for the most part, we're there. Today, we're going to plant a Coastal Star Romaine. This is pelletized seed. Pelletized means it is round. It's got clay around it. It's designed more for commercial use, commercial cedars, or a hoss garden cedar like I have behind me here with the proper plates but you do not direct seed lettuce in July and August darn near anywhere you are so what I'm going to use is I'm going to use our trusty imp cedar if you watched any of my videos in the past you know what this is this allows me to keep the soil in the seed straight as I put the seeds in first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some seed here into the tray. You can see the pelletized by how round it is. That's clay. And again, it allows you to go ahead and put your seed in a cedar or a commercial uh, implement of some sort, and it makes things a lot quicker. We don't have any of that. So I'm going to take my seed, and I'm going to take, okay, here's my first one, and I'm going to put it in the holes, right? One, two, three four, five, and I like to push them down. You don't have to. Six, seven, 
eight. Okay, so I've got this row done, but then I go over here and do this row over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you can see my seeds are good to go. So what I do is I take my imp seeder and I move it over to the next set of cells. Now if you look to see where my, cell, my seeds are, they're good to go. Let's do some more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, and the reason why I count keeps me from messing up, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we go on until we're done to the end of the tray. So let's move on and we will do all the rest of these until we get to the end and I'll show you how to do that. Now we're coming to the last row and so we will move our imp seeder one more time, put it over here and we will start putting our seeds down in here. Now as you can see with the previous seeds, you can see if you happen to miss any, which does happen to me every so often. In my former career I actually had something to do with numbers and yet every so often I miscount. Imagine that. But as I get to the end here, if you, I don't know if you can hear that or not. We got, I'm in the milking barn down here where we milk cows and goats. And we have baby goats just next door. And so that's what's going on over there. You may actually see a chicken run through here. We got chickens running all over. You may hear guineas. It's hard to say. I mean, we got critters all over the place. Okay, so we are at the very end of our imp seeder. So we're gonna pick up our seeds that we have left. Remember, this is uh, Coastal Star Romaine, and we are going to roll it up, and eventually I'll put a rubber band on this and use it again next year. So we're going to pick this up, and we're going to see where we're at, and take a good look. Looks like we did a pretty good job. The seeds are standing a little high, so I think what I'll do is I will push the seed down just a little bit, no more than maybe quarter of an inch, eighth inch preferably. And I'll show you what we do next. Now one of the big things that the commercial people have over the rest of us is they have been doing this stuff forever. But one of the secrets that they have is they put vermiculite on the top of their germination trays. Why? First of all, it keeps the moisture in. One of the, the worst things that can happen during the germination process is for your seeds to dry out. So once you put the vermiculite on the top, it's gonna to help seal the top and keep the moisture in. The second thing it does, it kills bacteria that can cause dampening off. If you've never seen dampening off, what that is is your, your plants come up and they're, they're real small and all of a sudden you'll go in one day and there'll be a whole bunch of them just down and dead and all mildewy and, and, and look terrible. So vermiculite does two major functions. It keeps the soil the way it needs to be damp and good for germination and it keeps the dampening off away. So let's put some vermiculite on. Vermiculite. We use a lot of this around here. As you can see, you just kind of pour it on and kind of spread it around. You want to do it as even as you can. And we're going to do our wax on, wax off as well on this. The idea is, again, to get it mixed in good on top of our soil mix. I've seen uh, some of the other YouTube channels where they don't use this. And I, I think it's really, really a shame to not tell people about vermiculite. It's just amazing stuff. It's cheap and it's easily found. You can find it locally. We buy ours on Amazon normally because I buy it in bulk. But I mean, it's good stuff. As you can see, we've got kind of our vermiculite sitting on the top. So I'm going to clean up our tray.
Okay, we're gonna try the watering again. This can seems to be problematic. Let's try. Try it one more time. I'm spilling, it's making a mess. We're gonna try something else. Here we go. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put enough water in the bottom of this thing so it comes pretty close to the top. That's what I'm talking about there, there's water. And as you can see, I got water running every which way, which is okay. Get my vermiculite out of the way. And what we're going to do is we're going to wait for our vermiculite to change colors. As you can see, some of it is already changing colors. Hopefully that's not where I sprayed it on the top. Nothing's perfect. Anyway, we'll see. Let's wait and see what happens. As we're waiting for our vermiculite to dampen down. This is our germination chamber. I think I've had it in a couple different uh, videos. These are our thermostat and humidity controls. This is an air conditioner that I bought at Home Depot for a hundred bucks. And the Dr. Pepper slash Coke machine was something I had sitting around here for about 10 years. The cooling unit on the uh, Coke machine was not fixable. If I'd had the proper tools and a gazillion dollars, I could have fixed it, but nonetheless. And so I tore all that out, gutted it out, put a big hole inside, put the air conditioner in, put the controls on, and it works amazingly well. You could do the same with a wood box if you had to, but the germination chamber is a game changer if you're ever thinking about making one. This is Charlie. He's uh, one of our bulls. He was born here and his mother died and we nursed him and got him up to strength and now he's one of our main bulls. He's a pretty nice young man. He weighs 2,000 pounds and you really don't want him to step on you, but nonetheless, he's pretty sweet. Hopefully you can hear me over the air conditioning unit, but this is our coastal star remain in the germination chamber. In about two days, we'll start seeing germination and we will pull this out and set it in the shade outside to try to start getting it to uh, get used to the heat. But right now, it's gonna live in a pleasant 70 degree high humidity environment until it comes up. Germination and proper plant propagation are key factors when you wanna grow your own food. If you put the seeds in and nothing comes up, it's a problem. Once the seeds come up, if you screw up or do something that the seeds or the plants don't like, they'll die. Again, not good. If you do exactly what we do here, you won't have any problems. Until next time, see you down at the barn.